Hey guys, I'm Han. This is my wife, Kelly. We react to a bunch of videos we want to learn right now. We're learning a lot about Islam. So right here, if you go to my community page, it says, what should we react to? And there is 135 comments. We've been looking at these and reacting to videos. So after we reacted to a few, now I'm like, I want to know how Islam actually began mm -hmm. because we've been kind of skipping around and all that. So I actually found this video. So let's just get into this video and really learn and see what this video has to say, Kelly. This is right. How Did Islam Begin? And this is by True Tube. Let's see. How Islam began in under 10 minutes. Not a problem. We've started. Okay, so travel back in time with me to a land far, far away and long, long ago. Mecca and Arabia, about the year 570. Mecca is important for two reasons. One, the Kaaba is there, an ancient temple built to worship God. And two, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca. Now, problem. I can't show you Muhammad, because it wouldn't be right. I'll tell you why in a bit. But in the meantime, here's his name in Arabic. Nice. Back in the day, Mecca was a lawless place. The only way to be safe was to have backup. Lots of rich big brothers who'd beat up anyone who got in your way. So the place was ruled by the most powerful families who could do pretty much what they wanted. And religion didn't help. By this time, the Kaaba had been filled to overflowing with 360 idols that did nothing to help anyone. So it was a tough place to grow up. If, like Muhammad, you were a poor orphan and believed in just one God you couldn't see, like the Jews and the Christians, he called him Allah, the God, in Arabic there. Muhammad's dad died before he was even born, and his mum died when he was just six. So he was brought up by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, and then, when he died too, by his uncle, Abu Talib, who had the respect of the city's ruling families, so Muhammad was safe for the time being. Muhammad started out as a shepherd and then became a businessman traveling about buying and selling stuff for rich clients. When he did some work for a rich widow called Khadija, she was so impressed by his honesty and skill that they ended up getting married. And for a while, it looked like Muhammad was going places. Well, he was, but not how you think. Every year in the month of Ramadan, different calendar, different names for the months, there was a big party around the Kaaba. When people made sacrifices to the idols, Muhammad hated it so he'd get out of town and sleep in a cave he'd found on top of a nearby mountain. One night, Muhammad's praying to Allah when wham! There's the angel Jibreel, you might say Gabriel, standing right in front of him. Read, says the angel, but Muhammad couldn't read. No schools, you see. Jibreel keeps on at him. Three times he says, read. Then he grabs hold of Muhammad and wham! Again, it's like Muhammad's learned the words off by heart. So he recites the message out loud. Read in the name of your Lord, who created man from a drop of blood. Read, for your Lord is most generous. He who taught by the pen, taught man what he did not know. It was a message from Allah. God was speaking to him just like he'd spoken to the prophets in the Jewish and Christian holy books, which meant he was a prophet too. The messages continued for the rest of Muhammad's life. Allah gave him the words to say and the prophet recited them. The words were written down by his friends and years later they were collected together and became the Muslim holy book, the Qur'an, which means recitation, because Muhammad recited it, you see? Anyway, that was much later, so back to the night of power. Muhammad tells his family, then his friends, and eventually everyone about Allah, that he's the one and only God, that he wants everyone to be treated fairly, and long story short, it didn't go down well with the ruling families of Mecca, who liked things just the way they were, thank you very much. You see, Islam means obedience to Allah, and Muslim means someone who obeys Allah, and the ruling families didn't want anyone obeying anyone else but them. So the people who believed in Muhammad's message, the Muslims, were given a hard time. Some were even tortured and killed. A few of them managed to escape to Abyssinia, Ethiopia, but most were stuck in Mecca. Muhammad also had to cope with the death of his wife, and then just a few weeks later, his uncle too. Feeling very down, he went to the Kaaba to pray to Allah one night. Then, the weirdest thing happened. Jibreel turns up, sits him on a winged horse called al Borak, and flies him all the way from Mecca to Jerusalem. He prays with all the prophets hey, who've ever lived. <laughs> then, he's taken up hey, to the heavens to chat with some of the prophets, yeah. and then into paradise itself, where Allah tells Muhammad to pray five times a day and to stay strong. He's returned to Jerusalem, and then flies back to the Kaaba in Mecca. 
We call it the night Flies. journey, and Muslims still argue whether it was a real experience or a vision, but whatever, it gave Muhammad a much needed boost, and just as well, because there were more tough times ahead. So, there was this other city called Yathrib. The people there heard about Muhammad and his message and invited him and his followers to join them. A few at a time, the Muslims left Mecca and made a dangerous journey across the desert to Yathrib. It's known as a hijra, which means migration, you know, like birds do. Muhammad and a few of his friends stayed in Mecca until everyone had got away and then made plans for their own escape. But the ruling families wanted to kill Muhammad while they still could. So seven sons, one from each family, were sent in the middle of the night to stab the Prophet while he slept. But he was way ahead of them. And when they burst into the house, Muhammad was gone. Trackers were sent out to hunt him down. Muhammad and his best friend Abu Bakr took a roundabout route to try and shake off the pursuit. But the trackers were too good and slowly gained on them. So Muhammad and Abu Bakr hid in the cave and prayed that no one found them. The trackers found the cave all right, but they didn't bother going in to search. There was no way Muhammad could be inside, they thought. There was a spider's web over the mouth of the cave and a nesting bird at the entrance. He must have given them the slip. So off they went, leaving Muhammad and Abu Bakr protected by a spider and a bird. Muhammad made it safely to Yathrib, which was renamed Medina al Nabi, the city of the Prophet, but most people just call it Medina. But Muhammad's worries weren't over yet. There were three big battles between the Muslims and the Meccans. First, the Battle of Badr, when Muhammad and just 313 men faced 1,000 Meccan soldiers. Miraculously, the Muslims won. Then, there was the Battle of Uhud, which didn't go so well. Some of Muhammad's men disobeyed his orders and ran off during the battle to raid the Meccans' camp, and so the Muslims were outmaneuvered. Then, there was the Battle of the Trench. Medina was protected on three sides by mountains, so when the Meccan forces advanced in the city, the Muslims just dug a deep trench. The Meccans made camp, but the weather was terrible. Pouring rain put out their fires and howling winds blew down their tents. Eventually, they gave up and went back to Mecca. It was all a bit embarrassing. They were losing the respect of the local tribes who were flocking to join the Muslims. So a peace treaty was signed at Hudaybiyah. But it wasn't long before the Meccans broke it. Muhammad decided that enough was enough. By now he had over 10,000 men, so he led them across the desert to Mecca. The ruling families realized they'd made a huge mistake, but it was too late. All they could do was surrender and hope that the Muslim army killed them quickly. But Muhammad said there should be no more fighting. He rode into Mecca and went straight to the Kaaba. He circled it seven times anti-clockwise and smashed all the idols rededicating the Kaaba to Allah. And that's why I'm not going to show you Muhammad. The Muslims wanted to make it totally clear that they only worship the one unseen God. So they didn't have any pictures of Muhammad in case anyone thought he was an idol. And they didn't have any pictures of Allah because he's like nothing on earth. So it would be impossible to draw him anyway. So there you go. How Islam began in under 10 minutes. How did I do? Wow, now that makes a lot of sense. And I actually like that aspect of it where you're not supposed to show Muhammad yeah. because basically he's like, it's not about me. It's like how exactly. how Jesus, he never said worship me. Mm -hmm. And then people started worshiping Jesus. Right. And really, it wasn't really about Jesus. It was all about God in the first place. Yeah. So that's what people need to realize. And it really is an awesome story to tell because he just gathered a group of people more people more people and then he went back there circled it seven times my lucky number and uh destroyed all the other idols and then made people only worship god which is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing yeah i think that it is really really good to make that distinguish straight from the start like this is not about idol and i think Especially back then, the concept of one God, I think, was just a lot for people to wrap their heads around and mm. just being in this world. So I think in the case of Jesus, it was like they couldn't conceive like this concept of God. But if you had this man walking around like we can conceive a being, you know, a being that looks like us. So I think their mind just kind of naturally went to him. You know what I mean? Because it was so new. 
because it was the same thing. There wasn't the concept of the one God. There was the religion was quite different. So I see how that happened. But they made that clear from the start. Hey, it's not about me. It's about God. Crash down the idols. It's not about idols. There's one. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. And I like learning about the history of the area and just how the things worked. So what was it? Who, how did he fly on the white horse? Did you catch? Yeah. I mean, whenever the they were saying the he flew horse. on the horse, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Immediately I started thinking about like extraterrestrials and you know, because <laughs> just because you're extraterrestrial doesn't mean you're an alien or anything. You could be an angel. You're just not from yeah. this planet, literally right. extraterrestrial. So I was thinking maybe extraterrestrial picked him up and flew him there. And uh, one of God's angels, or that—that's just so. That's such an awesome story, and mm -hmm. he was flying back and forth and going different places. So, because that's a lot of miles. <laughs> oh yeah, so he was going back and forth, and he mm -hmm. truly was chosen by God to let to do a mission. Yeah, that's fascinating because I didn't know that he led on all these battles and everything during his life because. It's just, you know, with just the main religion that we have a background knowledge of is Christianity. So, you know, Christianity really developed after Jesus passed on. So you kind of just go into this assuming it's the same situation, like the religion was more so developed afterwards. But no, he was right there battling in the trenches. So that's that's cool. Yeah, I think it's awesome, man. He was there the whole time. And just hearing the story and why they don't show Muhammad really out of respect for God. Almost. It's like mm -hmm. they don't want people to get it twisted. So it, it really is awesome. I, mean, I, I do like it. Yeah. It seems like Islam started developing so fast for him in his I own. No, it just started spreading and spreading. But that was only 60 some years old and mm. it started going in his lifetime. Yeah. Because he was born in 570 and then yeah. around like 627, 624. He yeah. was you know, on these wars whenever he'd be like 50 something, you know, right. so it, it was, that was really cool. So I'm, I actually am glad we watched that. Keep sending me videos to react to you guys and we're going to react to them. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next Thank one. Thank you.